Number 24. By what factor does the drag force on a car increase as it goes from 65 to 110 kilometers per hour? All right, so first thing I notice is that, um, well, I'm thinking I, sh I should probably convert these into meters per second, all right, just because that is the value of the velocity in our formula, all right, and all the other units will be in terms of uh, meters per second. So let's first do that conversion, okay? So we'll do 65, this is kilometers per hour, and to convert that, kilometers on the bottom, meters on the top, a thousand meters in one kilometer, that goes away. Then we have meters, but now we have to cancel the hours, so they're in the denominator, we gotta put them in the numerator, and we'll go right to seconds because there are 3,600 seconds in an hour. Okay, wonderful. So now, let's just simply do the calculation. So 65 times 1,000, divided by 3,600. So it works out to be 18.1. So this is 18.1 <clears throat> 18 meters per second, okay? So that's one value, and now let's do the 110, right? So it'd be 110 kilometers per hour. It's gonna literally be the same process. We have the 1,000 meters on the top, one kilometer on the bottom, and then we have the one hour, and then the 3,600 seconds, and we get 110 times 1,000 divided by 3,600. So we get 30.6, all right? So we get 30.6 uh, meters per second. Okay, all right, very good. So now, um, where can we go from here? So now what we can do is, now that we have these particular values, um, now we can calculate the uh, the factor by the, the factor at which the drag force increases. So how do we do that? Let's take a look at this formula. F sub D, all right, is equal to one half the coefficient of drag times the uh, density times the surface area of the object facing that fluid times the velocity squared. So let's just assume all of this is constant for these two cases, okay? Well, actually, you know what? Let me set up a formula. So what I'll do, I'll say um, this is the F of D2. I'll call this one number two, and then I'll divide that. So I'll divide that by number one, okay? So here we have f of d to one is equal to one half CPA V squared. Now notice if I set up my ratio this way, the halves cancel because they're the same. We're talking about the same object, so all of this cancels, right? The coefficient of drag, the density is the same, and the surface areas are the same. But the velocities are changing, and so will the drag forces. So my formula now works out to, works out to be the force of drag for the second object in relation to the force of drag so the first object should equal the velocity of the second ob uh, of the second object, right? Squared divided by the velocity of the first object squared. So now all I have to do is just plug these in, right? So F D2 over F D1 is equal to 30.6 squared over 18.1 squared. And let's see what that works out to be. So we have 30.6 squared divided by 18.1 squared. Oop. And it works out to be 2 point, what do we get here? 2.86, right? 2.86 times. So it's just a simple ratio. What happens if I left the values the same? I didn't change the units? Well, let's see. Why don't we just calculate it? So FD2 over FD1 was equal to 110, right, kilometers per hour over 65 kilometers per hour. They were both squared. And what does that come out to be now? 110 squared divided by 65 squared. And look at that. Came out to basically be the same number. It's off slightly just because of the rounding, but it's gonna be 2.86, right, to one. Now, Andrew, why did you convert the units? I know I didn't have to in the beginning, but the thing is, you know, sometimes I try to think about it from a perspective, from the perspective of a student. One may not know it, that they can do that. So I'm just trying to show you the way that you might be saying, I don't know if I can keep it in those units, but I know you know, the units involved in the equation of meters per second squared. So I'm just showing you the way to convert it and then do it from there. And then I'm going back and saying, well, you really didn't even have to do that um, because we're just dealing with simple ratios here. So the ratios are all gonna work out to be the same. But in case you weren't aware of that, I, uh, I was able to walk you through that particular path. All right, so notice um, the interesting part is that the velocity, if I just look at the velocities without squaring them, right? The velocities simply increased by this ratio, right? 110, so 110 to 65 is 
well, 1.69. So the velocity only increased 1.69 times, but the drag force increased almost three times. Why? Because we're dealing with squared velocities, all right? So the drag force does not go up proportionally with the velocity. It increases with the square of the velocity. That is important to remember. Guys, thank you so much for tuning in. I hope this helped. Please do remember to subscribe, and I'll see you in the next lesson. Take care.